Well, good afternoon to you. 506 here, News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we're making sense of the news. You can join us today, 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. Two House committees yesterday moved to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress for his repeated, brazen, flagrant rejections of a subpoena, a lawful subpoena. For more on this, I'm joined by a member of both committees. <laughs> Andy Biggs is here. The congressman is a member of both the House Judiciary and Oversight Committees. Congressman, you had a busy day yesterday. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure, Vince. Yeah, I was uh, moving from committee to committee, uh, back and forth, but all day. It was, But it was uh, interesting and uh, important. Yeah, it sure was. So I assume you voted the same way in both committees to hold Hunter Biden uh, in contempt of Congress, or did you vary it up to keep things interesting? I don't know. I was I was thinking of uh, in oversight voting for <laughs> against it, but no, I did vote for both impeach uh, both uh, both committees. I voted for contempt. And, and give me the rationale. Why, I, obviously, I think I know, but why why is it that you would consider uh, Hunter Biden to be in contempt of the People's Congress? Um, you've got a committee that had authority to issue a subpoena. You had a subpoena that was issued, a uh, subpoena that was served, acknowledgement of that service. There was a specific date, time, location. Um, and instead of showing up there at that specific date, time, and location, he came over to the Senate and just outside the reach of the uh, sergeant arms for the House to do a press conference, aided and abetted by uh, Eric Swalwell, he does a press conference and basically says, I know I'm supposed to be doing a deposition, but I'm not going to do it. And, uh, and then he had the temerity to show up yesterday for about 15 minutes until he realized that he would be the focus, main focus. His presence would be the main focus. And then he skedaddled out of there. Uh huh. Well, he was inside the reach of the sergeant at arms yesterday. Why not arrest him? Um, because at this point, we, we're beyond the date and time. And now we've got a contempt citation, and we have to follow through with it. We had not passed it out, and you have to get that through the floor. If if you tried that again after we had done it on the floor, then you could insist that the sergeant-at-arms actually take him into custody, believe yeah. it or not. Wow. Okay. Well, so we'll see if he comes back to Congress, uh, the, knowing that's uh, hanging out there. Um, so, yeah, he, he one of the obvious things that you know he thinks he's going to be able to get away with here is, well— I agreed. I, I told them I would testify. In fact, I would testify publicly, and I keep showing up in order to express that view. Uh, that was the stunt yesterday. Um, I believe he also had a camera crew in tow as he, because he's been filming a documentary about all of this drama. Um, what do you make of this talking point that, oh, he's so willing to testify? He was so willing to testify yesterday that he managed to stay in the committee room about 10, 12 minutes once, once uh, Nancy Mace started asking him questions, then you had a Democrat, and then Marjorie Taylor Greene's turn came up, and away he went. He doesn't want to answer questions in public, and actually, I think it's a bluff on the part of the Democrats. Think about it. Do you think that the Democrats really want 15 to 30 hours of Hunter Biden sitting there, um, and every time the Republicans ask him questions, saying, well, I'm under criminal investigation, so I can't answer that, or I'm going to take the fifth, uh, or I can't recall, because yeah. that would be the answers to those questions. Right. Well, and if he did public testimony, every single one of those Democrats would serve as a defense attorney for Hunter Biden. Oh, yeah. They'd be kicking up all sorts of dirt. Um, yeah, so this is it, it is interesting. What about Joe's involvement in all of this? When when Hunter first uh, declined, refused to uh, respond to the subpoena and come and testify before your committee, um, he the, the White House indicated that day that, oh, yeah, Joe talked to him ahead of time. Yesterday, they were more evasive on that. In fact, Corrine uh, Jean-Pierre refused to <laughs> indicate one way or the other if Joe had a conversation with Hunter before that stunt yesterday. What's, what are the implications there? Well, the implications are, since, he, since it is criminal contempt, that if you knew about it and you facilitated, you either obstructed justice uh, or obstructed a, uh, a Congress, a congressional uh, uh, proceeding, which, by the way, is is what they keep calling an, an insurrection. So you had Joe Biden committing an insurrection. The, but the other thing is, between him and Swalwell, you had the aiding and abetting a criminal offense, which was to avoid uh, the service and, and to uh, criminal, be in criminal contempt of Congress. So, I mean, it's, it is a real thing. 
and it is it's a serious thing, which is why all of a sudden Corinne Jean-Pierre is now changing the story. Well, maybe, you know, maybe he didn't know. Uh, we're not going to talk about it anymore. I watched her presser, uh, and it's it's pretty weak sauce uh, what they're, what's uh, being served by the White House right now. Yes, weak sauce. That's a good way to summarize most of her press conferences. Um, let's uh, let's talk about the way that the Biden administration uh, is weaponizing the United States Department of Justice and all of these various Democrat prosecutors across the country to take down Joe Biden's top political opponent. Uh, we found out some more information this week about the Fulton County District Attorney, Fannie Willis. Apparently, she hired her boyfriend, who was cheating on his wife, as a special prosecutor. And then the, between the two of them, they've taken well over a million dollars in taxpayer funding over the last two years. And he's also, this is all to go after Trump. And he has apparently visited the White House now on multiple occasions for hours-long conversations with the White House Counsel's Office. Uh, what do we know about this? Well, uh, what it is is, I mean, this is consistent. Don't forget, you know, we found out that apparently uh, uh, Jack Smith's top aide met with the White House before uh, before the Trump investigation really got cooking as well. Yep. Uh, with Jack Smith, so this is consistent. It's being run out of the White House. There's a reason why we why we view DOJ and, quite frankly, the White House as, as um, uh, being weaponized instead of seeking justice. It's it's a political witch hunt, and they're, they've gone after Trump, and quite frankly, Trump associates. I mean, don't forget you've got Matthew Graves, the D.C. Uh, USA, who's going after now. He says, if you were on the Capitol grounds on January 6, 2021, even if you never entered the building, never attempted to enter the building, weren't engaged in violence or anything, we're going to track you down and bring uh, criminal charges against you here. That's the type of thing where people say, look, you know – uh, we don't have a justice system anymore. We have an injustice system, and it's not just a two-tier system, what you've got going on here. Uh, but Fannie Willis, I've in- actually introduced legislation that says uh, because of she's engaged in this kind of conduct, that, and they've used federal money, by the way, Vince, uh, to, in the Fulton County uh, Attorney's Office, we're gonna not, not gonna fund federal. We're not gonna send federal uh, dollars to the Fulton County Attorney anymore because they're abusing their power and authority. That shouldn't happen anywhere to anyone in this country. And yet they're doing it uh, against Trump in order, in an effort, of course, to stop him from prevailing in the next election. Uh, you've got. You've also got, in addition to, as you mentioned, Jack Smith's aides meeting with the White House prior to prosecuting Trump, uh, and uh, this in, in the Fulton County. Uh, office meeting with the White House prior to prosecuting Trump. You also had the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, visited the Biden White House both before and after. White House uh, uh, visitors logs show that Letitia James visited on April of 2022, August of 2023, and July of 2023. That's on both sides of her filing a $250 million civil suit against Trump, uh, which had, you know, kind of kind of the end of that trial today. Uh, in New York. So the White House's hands, fingerprints are all over this, Congressman. Yeah, absolutely. And I I view that as, uh, you know, if you're by tampering uh, eff- effectively with the elections, because he knew that Trump was running and this this is designed, quite frankly, the timing of all this is designed to keep President Trump in court, in litigation, all the way to the 2024 election. And by doing that, in my opinion, uh, that is that's a high crime. You have tampered with the justice of the United States of America, and you've used your position and power to do so. Yeah. To uh, and, and I I just don't think you can allow that to stand. Um, uh, we, the other side would not allow it to stand if Trump did it, no. and nor should we allow it to stand with well, Biden doing it. I just remember back to Bill Clinton meeting with Loretta Lynch on a tarmac on an airplane. That that was a huge deal. That was a big scandal because you had the United States Department of Justice making an examination of Hillary Clinton's uh, theft of classified information. And for Bill Clinton to meet with the attorney general in on a, on a, on a tarmac on an airplane, and then they claim they talked about their grandchildren, it was a massive scandal to most people. And now you have the White House doing that on a routine basis with prosecutors who are not even federal officials. No, that's right. By the way, that was in Phoenix, so I'll always remember the, the, the tarmac meeting in Phoenix. But, I mean, that's, that, that become, that's the point, is um, they're having these meetings to encourage uh, lawfare 
uh, to gain an advantage uh, in the political process. That is really, un- quite frankly, it's unbelievable. Um, but it, it, but we know it to be believable. We know it to be true. And Congress should finally take off the gloves and take action against this administration. But I, I fear that too many of my colleagues um, don't understand leverage and leverage for us or the check that we have against a runaway executive branch with the founders gave us was the purse strings. And you can design whatever you want to do with the purse strings to actually uh, impose penalties when there's abuse like we see from uh, uh, the White House. Well, does, does Speaker Mike Johnson have the stomach for that? You know, we, we just saw, a, a, you know, over the weekend, we saw that he had come to an agreement on spending with Chuck Schumer. Uh, the status of that is now kind of an open question because uh, today, as of today, we're seeing all these reports. Chuck Schumer publicly announced that they plan on moving forward now with a, with another short-term continuing resolution. What's going on in the spending fight, and will we see anything that benefits the American people? Yeah, so um, I think that there's enough of us on our side that have pushed back on this to show the folly of what they were trying to do with this Schumer deal um, y- y- that that Johnson's had to reconsider. Uh, he's being pushed by the moderate high high dollar spending crowd uh, to continue with it, and those of us who think it's too much and that you have to you should be you actually should be solving the border problem. Um, uh, well, I think we've enticed him to to make some kind of reconsideration. Now, will he will he come all the way off that deal and and uh, make a new deal? I don't th- I don't know. And so there there's a lot of talk now about a short term CR. Yes. And my and my and my position is uh, you should maybe protect uh, the the military, the the veterans, the the border patrol, eyes. Uh, TSA and and uh, air traffic controllers, and then you just let you just unplug it. Uh, um, you know, mandatory funding would still continue with Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, but then you unplug after everything I just said, which is to to, uh, to secure the country, and and just tell the Biden administration we're not going to fund you until you actually start bringing the border uh, under control. The border is absolutely a mess. And quite frankly, it's expanding to the entire country, uh, the impacts of what's going on on our border. It's, it's totally destructive. And, and anything that can be done to bring some, some order to the border would be a huge deal. Congressman Andy Biggs, uh, thank you as always for joining us and for that update from Congress today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Vince. Appreciate it. Good to, good to talk to you. That's uh, Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona. He sits on those big committees, Judiciary and Oversight. So funny. NBC had Nancy Pelosi on this morning over on Morning Joe. They just had everybody, didn't they? They had Nancy Pelosi. They call her the Speaker Emerita over there. Emerita. Speaker, excuse me. Speaker Emerita Pelosi. <laughs> you could just call her Speaker Pelosi if that's what they want to say. But now everything has to have a big drawn out title. It's, it's the way the left doesn't want to refer to Trump as President Trump. They just call him. Now, they, if they refer to him at all, if they have to, they're like former President Trump. Some lefties with severe cases of Trump derangement systems say the former guy, they say. They're so scared of Big Orange. It's the funniest thing. So anyway, Speaker Emerita Pelosi <laughs> was on with MSNBC this morning, and uh, she swears that the left is all about controlling borders. Uh, the, the president has put forth over $10 billion to uh, assist at the border. We've mm-hmm. always been for controlling our border, for securing the border. There's never been a question about that. It's that those billions are for the red carpet that Nancy Pelosi wants to roll out uh, and Joe Biden wants to roll out. Come on in. The water's fine. Get into the United States. They're not looking to secure the border. They're looking to put more doors in it. Nancy Pelosi also talked about Joe Biden and the vision he has for our country. Oh, do tell. But he has been great, and he has a vision for our country that is consistent with what our founders had as a vision. He has not. And again, it honors that vision. It honors the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform. Mm -hmm. And it, it again, uh, respects the aspirations of our children to go forward. So there's a vision. The ones who survived the womb. His knowledge of the issues. He has strategic thinking about legislating Mm -hmm. all in the head. Right. 
In the heart, he is the most empathetic. God, he's the most empathetic uh, person in the... I mean, he just really identifies with working families. So it's like the MSNBC audience at home, they're nodding along going, that makes perfect sense. That, you know, Pelosi is among the crew that's saying the same thing. The White House keeps saying this too. It's like the reason why Joe Biden has the worst polling, the worst approval rating of any president in any of our lifetimes. The reason for that is because the American people are just too ignorant of how great he's been. He's so empathetic. He's so wonderful. He's exactly like the founders. What do you mean he's like the founders? What is he, a slave owner? What does that mean, Nancy Pelosi? I thought we were against the founders. It, it changes moment by moment. You know, the Biden administration trying to tear down a statue of William Penn right now. <laughs> it's... He's exactly like the founders. He's got the vision of the founders. Oh, so the founders are good now. Whatever. You know, it's all, everything is, is utility. It's all a lie. You know, uh, Joe Biden, remember at the top of the show, I told you, Joe Biden was in Bluebell, Pennsylvania last week, claiming the legacy of George Washington and pretending that he was giving a speech from Valley Forge, which he didn't. The media has been lying about that for a week. He wasn't actually at Valley Forge. He was 15 miles away at Montgomery County Community College. Yes, Pennsylvania has a Montgomery County in the suburbs of Philadelphia. It's a, uh, it was Bluebell, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Everything is a lie. Everything's a useful lie with these people. Uh, coming up, ABC, you know the television network? They have a mentally ill person who's having a breakdown on national television, and they're milking her for every dollar they can. The expose on the human rights crisis coming up. Hey, good afternoon to you. 535 now, News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we're making sense of the news. You can join us at 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. Hispanics are now the most likely racial group to rank immigration as their most pressing matter. That's according to the Associated Press this week, a poll just published yesterday. A total of 43% of Hispanic adults have identified immigration as the number one priority for the government to address, surpassing 36% of white respondents, 29% of Asian and Pacific Islanders, and 19% of black respondents. Moreover, 35% of American adults surveyed named immigration as a main issue. 55% of those, Republicans, 22% Democrats, according to this survey, the Daily Caller with the write-up here. Um, fewer than 3%, in case you're wondering what the uh, what this means, it's, it's not that uh, Hispanic voters are eager for more illegal immigration. Fewer than 3% of likely Hispanic voters support amnesty for illegal immigrants, according to a 2023 survey by Convention of States and the Trafalgar Group. So uh, Hispanic Americans are deeply concerned about illegal immigration. They want, the, immigra they want the, the borders to come back. And yet, Joe Biden refuses to do that. And the people who are pouring in are, by and large, I don't know, what percentage of them would you say are Hispanic? It's hard to tell because we don't have good numbers on anything anymore when it comes to illegals. But they're coming from all over the planet, all over the planet, it's not just from Hispanic countries. And uh, in case you're wondering, Hispanic voters are now basically a coin toss on whether or not they're likely to support the Democrat or the Republican. Donald Trump has picked up a tremendous amount of support among Hispanic Americans. It's been, a, it's been one of the sea changes demog dem uh, demographically of our lifetime in politics. Donald Trump is also picking up not huge numbers, but meaningful numbers among black voters. And black voters are very much dropping off from Biden, even if they're not supporting Trump. Uh, a big problem. You hear Jim Clyburn, the South Carolina congressman, saying that Trump's got some real problems. Excuse me, Biden's got some real problems with black voters. And the message just isn't getting out there. Once again, it's the ignorance of the voters. They're, they just don't know how great Biden is. Yep. Uh, so things are uh, very interesting right now politically. And uh, if we can prevent the left from fully rigging the election, then uh, it'll be very interesting to be able to check those exit polls come Election Day of November of this year. How did it break out? How did it break out? So Hispanics, number one priority, immigration right now. Amazing. 
Just amazing. And, and not that surprising, but interesting to see in the numbers. I promised you uh, some audio of, of what's going on over on ABC. The ABC Network, they've got a show called The View, which we like to make fun of on a routine basis here. Uh, it is it is amazing. It's, they have what are, are nominally political conversations, but really it just involves a bunch of women with left-wing opinions screeching about how much they hate right-wing opinions, and then the audience clapping like seals. Now, I don't, I've never been to that audience. I don't, I've never talked to anybody in terms of the, the infrastructure of how that's built, but some of these network television shows, they have applause signs. Certainly the late night television shows do. I always have wondered, does the view have an applause sign? Do they have to signal to their audience? Do they tell them now's the time to applause or do they just, do they just clap at anything left wing, no matter how crazy it is? I don't actually know the answer to that. But ABC has got something interesting going on because one of the hostesses of The View is, of course, Whoopi Goldberg. You may know her as a nun from Sister Act. She's done a lot more since then, apparently, including being on this political chat show. And I, I'm convinced she's having some sort of mental break on national television, and nobody is stepping in to help her. Like, there's something really wrong with her, because you, no normal person has the opinions that Whoopi Goldberg does. The things that are coming out of her mouth are Looney Tunes. Just for instance, just yesterday and today, just yesterday and today, these are the warnings that she's making about what would happen if Donald Trump were to return to the White House. And she's very panicked about this. And uh, here's an example of what she said. This is her yesterday. You worried that it you is. can't pay your bill? Wait till he, the other guy becomes president and you won't have to worry about it because you'll be in some camp somewhere. Because that's his promise. His promise to us is he's going to force people to do his bidding. What? So if you're poor, don't worry about it. You're going to be living in, in a camp because Donald Trump is going to imprison everyone and force them to do his bidding. <laughs> now, if, if this were a normal political commentator and they had expressed this view in some forum, including on ABC, I would think that maybe they'd bench them at least for a day. We've suspended Whoopi Goldberg. What she said was too crazy. We'll welcome her back at a later date. We've, we've decided to send, oh, maybe they'll put her on a paid vacation. Whoopi's taking a few days off. She's going to, Settle it. But no, they're allowing this to continue. She was on TV today saying things equally crazy. But one more from yesterday. Whoopi says, should Trump be elected? Now, remember, as she as she posits all of these hypotheticals, Trump was already elected. Trump was president of the United States for four years. At the conclusion of his presidency, he left on inauguration day, as presidents do. Here's Whoopi yesterday. Because if he ever gets in again, we'll never have any more elections. There will be no more. What? He will stop it. And, and he's very clear about that. He wants to be dictator for life. He's very clear about that. Show me, please, uh, let's do the fact check. Where did Trump say that we'll never have any more elections or that he will be dictator for life? Play those quotes for me, please. I'd love to hear them. Love to see them. When did he express that on Truth Social? He's been, did you hear her? She said it like he's been saying it everywhere. And the audience there doesn't know any better. They're ignorant. So they're, they're Whoopi Goldberg is their Walter Cronkite. That's the closest thing they're ever going to get. They, this is, so she's the one who expresses all of the facts that they know. Because if he ever gets in again, we'll never have any more elections. There will be no more. He will stop it. And, and he's very clear about that. He's very he clear. He wants to be dictator for life. She laughs like everyone knows. He's so clear about this. He wants to be dictator for life. Everybody knows that. So again, she's going through some sort of episode. In, a, in some sense, you have to have some sympathy for her. Like there's se like a severe mental health crisis playing out on national television. And the executives at ABC are exploiting her. They're not stepping in to stop this. They, they're letting it play out. You know? This is like an episode of the Jerry Springer show, except it's the host that's going insane, not the guests. This is crazy. Here's Whoopi Goldberg today. Which, by the way, that's not even a real name, Whoopi Goldberg. Even that's a lie. Like, did you, did, I don't know her real name, but she adopted Whoopi Goldberg for her Hollywood career. She's warning journalists today, and she also has a warning for what she refers to as gay folks. What's going to happen should Donald Trump become president? Things are getting increasingly hysterical over on The View. I'm going to be on day one. I'm going to be a dictator. 
who says it to you, tells you, I'm going to put you people away. I'm going to take all the journalists. I'm going to take all the gay folks. I'm going to move you all around and disappear you. If that's the country you want, you know who to vote for. Well, if, that's not, if that's not the country you want, you have to make a decision. What? Just, can we make her a campaign surrogate for Joe Biden? Just, like, get her out on the campaign trail? What is even happening? So, if I understand that correctly, she says that should Donald Trump become president again, remember, he was president before, should it happen again, he's going to round up all of the journalists and the gay folks, and then he's going to move y'all all around. I'm not sure why he has to do that. Why, why, why do we add the extra pizzazz of moving everybody all around? And then he will disappear you is the final step. He's, <laughs> journalists, gay people, move you all around, disappear you. That's what Whoopi Goldberg was promising without any evidence whatsoever. She just made up everything she just said. It was all invented. Again, this has to be a mental break. And ABC News isn't intercepting her. It, it, the only way they should deal with this is to say, we've decided to part ways. So we came to a mutual agreement. Whoopi Goldberg is going to go live in her fabulous mansions. She's got plenty of money. She's, she's doing just fine. She has a big sneaker collection. She's good. But no, they're not doing that. They're, they're letting her self-immolate on national television and then making whatever money you make from that. How much did that possibly earn them? What kind of revenue could they be driving from that? And nobody at the table even pauses to be like, whoopee, it's a little much. He's not going to round up poor people and put them in camps. He's not going to cancel elections forever. He's not going to be a dictator for life. He's not going to round up journalists and gay people and then move them all around and then disappear them. I'm sorry, but what you're saying is insane. And you need to stop. And someone should stop your microphone, actually. And maybe we should go to commercial break while the nice men in white jackets come in and they move you around. <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy. And for, for years, this show has been a source of, of, of amusement to me just because... There is a lot of insanity like this, but this, don't you think this is like, like there really is something going on with her. So, and I feel bad for her, but she shouldn't be on television living out this, this crisis. Cole is in Stafford now on line two. Cole, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony show. Afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. So the easiest way to fix this is Trump needs to sue for defamation. It's pure and simple. You sue ABC, you sue Whoopi. It's pretty easy. They, they, they have no, I mean, this is a pretty blatant shut, you know, open and shut tort case for defamation. And that's how you fix it. There is remedy. People need to get off their butts and actually put in the effort so this stops. Yeah, yeah. Well, Trump, uh, yeah, add, add to Trump's legal bills. The man's like paying for uh, every lawyer in America that, that he can possibly hire right now to fight back against all these things. But, uh, you, but you've got a point. This is a good, this is a way for Trump to respond to this. He could sue him. Now, my, my guess is that the attorneys will say, well, as a public figure, the, the, the threshold's very high. But I don't know. At what point do you cross over it to claim that he's going to be a dictator, to claim that he's going to round up poor people, that he's going to disappear gay people, that he's going to disappear journalists, that he's going to get rid of elections entirely at, at some point you have to cross the line right well i would say that's a very <laughs> easy red line that's been crossed yeah that it's might not, qualify it's that hard and they're not even saying it out of you know there's no out of context it's not like they're there's hyperbole or being sarcastic it, it is said deadpan totally straightly. this is what's going to happen yes that's exactly right. That's exactly right. No, she's saying it like it's completely serious to her. She's that that's actually going to happen. And and in fact, she used it as a basis for uh, if that's what you want, vote for that. But otherwise, vote for Biden. That was uh, Whoopi Goldberg uh, just just in the last day. And I, we're going to dig even further. I, I think this is there's a lot more of this going on with Whoopi Goldberg that people need to know about. Thank you, uh, Cole. Inter interesting, important point. Yeah. And, and you can see over at ABC. Every so often, the lawyers do get involved because they'll come back from a commercial break and one of them, Sonny Hostin or something, I, I need to issue a correction over something I said earlier. That wasn't correct. It turns out it was actually this. And you know some lawyer got into their ear like, hey, you can't say that. Apparently, it doesn't happen very often with Whoopi at all. By the way, getting texts from all the friends now. Uh, I don't want to give their names. You would know them, though. 
some 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 friends. They're all te they're all texting me right now. Karen Johnson is her real name. Her name is not Whoopi Goldberg. Even her name is a lie. Karen Johnson. And I do tend to think that if you're asking people to believe you, the first two words that describe you should not be lies. <laughs> if, you, if, if the very first two words I might use to describe you, Whoopi Goldberg, are both lies, that doesn't bode well for your credibility beyond that. <laughs> John's in Herndon, line one. John, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Vince. Yes, sir. We, um... You know, I just I don't have hold out any hope because no matter how crazy she sounds, she seems like she's just talking the narrative that's being repeated by everybody else and and kind of has been for the last six eight years. But you know, it's a funny thing. It, it, every time I see this craziness, I have this uh, flashback to a very pleasant, innocent little drive. You know, where my wife and I would drive with my parents Christmas lights drive you know yeah. admiring it and my dad and i were just chit-chatting a little bit and all of a sudden i heard a little bit of you know uh john is this you know so it's it me and something accusatory i don't know what i did but it was something accusatory and then with and then i heard that from my mom and then then the judge spoke and i was convicted i only was of about 30 seconds it was like and i talked to my dad like you know i think i just got tried and convicted in a span of about 30 seconds. Like, for whatever, I'm not sure what happened back there. And he goes, yep. And that, it's, which was a pleasant, nice little swear, having fun. But that's the same kind of stuff that's going on in The View uh, and probably has been forever. So I don't think facts are ever going to matter until we can get the press. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it is true. Don't we? Doesn't everyone kind of have a whoopee in their life? Like somebody who's like, you know, just hair on fire, crazy left wing. And to the point that they've they've lost touch entirely with reality. And you're like, what do we do? And like the family kind of whispers like, how do we do just just leave them alone? Just, just don't talk to them. They're they're too far gone. And it's it's, it's an unfortunate. But I don't know. I, well, I'm not putting that person on a national television show and then ringing dollars out of her. God, I wish I could take something like that. But that has been the reason why, you know, Ameri you know, uh, conservatives have just been trying to play the polite. Yeah. Eventually this is going to go away because, you know, the yeah. facts will eventually win the day. Yeah. Uh, but I think we've been waiting a long time for that. I agree. You're right about that, John. All right. Hey, John, thank you very much for the call. It's, it is, it is true. Whoopi in some sense is kind of the, the most distilled version of the insanity that the rest of the media has been preaching now for years. All right, let's see. Alex is calling in from West Virginia, line one. Alex, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colonnais Show. Hey, Vince, how are you? Thanks for taking I'm, my call. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to call in because I did a quick little bit of research here, and uh, I found out where Whoopi Goldberg got her stage name from. Um, Where's that? Apparently, she has admitted that it comes from a whoopee cushion because when you're performing on stage, you never really have time to go to the bathroom and close the door. So if you get a little gassy, you have to let it go. So people used to say to me, you're like a whoopee cushion. And that's where the name came from. That's disgusting. And, and, I uh, agree. and not that surprising, actually. Uh, that's uh, I was, as you're telling me this, I'm looking it up. That's from a New York times article from 2006. She did say this. Ooh, inter it's interesting. She also gave an interview to hello magazine, she said, no one christened me that. I am Karen. Of course you are. But I was a bit of a farter, she says. The theaters I was performing in were very small, so if you were gassy, you had to walk away farting, and people would say I was like a whoopee cushion. I was sometimes quite noisy, never offensive. Well, I've got news for you, whoopee. Now you're both. The great one, Mark Levin, up next, right here on WMAL.